In the first part of this video, we're going to look at competition. So we've got some tomato plants growing here. Can you think of the type of things these plants will be competing for? The four main things that plants compete for are light, space, water and minerals. So each individual plant will be competing against each other for those four things. Now can you think about four things that animals might compete for? The four main things that they would compete for are food, water, space and mates. And this competition could be within the same species, so it could be lions competing with other lions for food, water, space and mates. Some of those things, like food, water and space, the animals could be competing with other species. For example, the lions could be competing with the hyenas, for example. Now we're going to look at how different plants and animals are adapted to their environment. So how do you think a cactus is adapted to live in a desert environment? Pause the video whilst you have a think. You may have thought of other adaptations, but here are the main ones. To survive in the desert environment, the cactus has adapted to have spines to deter predators. Another reason it has spines is because it has spines instead of leaves to reduce water loss, because the spines have a smaller surface area. It also has a thick stem with a waxy layer to reduce water loss a hollow stem to store water and widespread shallow roots. So you can see here a lot of the advantages for how the cactus is adapted is its ability to get and store water because in a desert environment there will be little water. So the cactus is able to survive here whereas many other plants are not. Now have a think about how camels are adapted to live in a desert environment and again you may want to pause the video whilst you have a think about this. So the main adaptations include thin fur over the body to allow for heat loss and control of body temperature, humps to store fat that can be converted to water, two rows of long eyelashes to protect their eyes from the sand, slit-like nostrils to prevent sand from entering the nose, large flat feet for walking on the sand, and concentrated urine to reduce water loss. So these adaptations are to do with conserving water and being able to convert their fat into water and to protect their bodies from sandstorms and sand getting into their respiratory system and also in terms of controlling their body temperature so the camels can survive well in the desert with little water, scarcely available food, whereas other animals would not be able to survive in this environment. And finally, have a think about how polar bears are adapted to live in an arctic environment. And again, you may want to pause the video whilst you have a think. The main adaptations include thick layers of fat and fur for insulation, white fur for camouflage, black skin to absorb heat radiation, ears with a small surface area to reduce heat loss, large flat feet for walking on the snow and large claws for catching prey. So for some plants and animals it's true to say that they might have to adapt throughout the year according to the changing seasons. For example, some animals will hibernate, so over the winter they will reduce their body temperature when their food is scarcely available. Some animals might migrate, so when the weather gets too cold for example, they might move to a hotter climate for part of the year. Some trees will lose their leaves in the autumn and over winter. 
and some animals even change in fur colour or thickness. For example, the Arctic hare has a coat that is white in the winter to camouflage in the snow and that turns to a brown coat in the summer where it will need camouflage against the ground and the rocks when there is no snow. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.